So welcome back to my short series on Node and Visual Studio Code. So we're doing JavaScript kind of at the command line, much like we would if we were just starting out learning the Python scripting language and that. And so what have I done? I've got two main.js files, one called wow, one cuff for There's no code in them yet, just some comments. And I have installed Prompt Synced, my uh, new favorite Node uh, package. My, my most favorite is probably PG. But if I'm doing stuff at the command line, definitely want something like prompt sync. So I guess I'll bring that in and then we'll talk a little bit about, about loops. So const. We call it input so that it looks like right Python. And I'm gonna we use require to do an import. I'm sure we get lots of little debates there. It found prompt sync, I'm happy. And then we got to run that, uh, light that firecracker right away. So bring in input and run it and hook it into the command window down below. This guy right here and that. And so, uh, but let's talk a little bit about loops uh, quickly. Uh, if you're coming from Python, there's only two, while, for. While loops are for when you don't know how many times you have to do something, right? And so there's a little Boolean logic in there to flip the switch from, uh, looping to hey the loop is done i'm out now most javascript loops right run on true there are some languages that have like a do until which actually it oper it loops on false until something becomes true sort of the opposite but javascript java even python their loops all loop on true and they keep it simple uh while i don't know how many times i have to do it but why two? Why do you need two whiles then? Well, this while is a pretest loop. It tests a condition at the beginning, which means it could be, well, false, and we never enter the loop. The do loop, we will actually be forced to go in there at least once. So I'm not going to actually demo the do while loop because I want to stick as close to my Python course as possible so people who are transitioning can say, okay, this looks the same. It's a little bit of a freaky loop. It has a strange little semicolon and that sort of thing that is almost required. There are a bunch of different for loops. There's only one for loop in Python. Now, even in Java, there's the old school for loop. This has been around forever, right? There's, and it's usually three pieces up in the parentheses here. There's some, the start concept, you usually see i is equal to zero. You see the stop i is less than, so there's some condition that gets tested. And if it becomes false, then it, um, uh, stops the loop and then there's usually how do you want to count by one you want to skip count by two it's really you know it's up to you so there's a concept of a start stop and a step it's old school and you're going to see it everywhere it's also a pretest loop right so just like while it's a pretest loop so it tests a condition right away so you technically may not enter that loop in javascript i uh i first saw the in and i said hey I was in another language, Java, and they entered, uh, they added a for each loop and they used this in operator too. And so I said, maybe that's what I'm looking for. I found out not what I thought. Okay. Not quite what I thought. And it's this of for loop that is closest to the concept of a for each loop that you see in a lot of other languages. And so, uh, this for one of the many, right. And that, and this is really about keys in an object. And, but then you're just cycling through keys and you got to do something with the keys. So there's usually an extra line of code that you need to do inside your loop, which is not, not what I was looking for typically when I'm doing for loops in that. But now we're going to do this while loop. Now, again, I said we need a condition, right? Loops loop on true, stop on false. So we need a Boolean, a Boolean variable and it's going to be changing. So uh, it's got to be either var or let. We can't use const. Const means once it's made, you can't change it. So I'll go let, uh, we'll call it user continue. Uh, so the user wants to continue and we're going to set that to true so that we force ourselves into the loop. Someone's going to argue, well, then just use the do while, uh, not today <laughs> in that. So then we go while, right? Uh, user continue, basically loop, right? But you're going to need a condition inside your loop to flip the switch to false. Right. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be stuck in this loop forever in that. So I will uh, prompt the user and ask him, hey, do you want to continue? And then I need a little uh, if statement to say, well, I gave the user a choice. Right. And so anytime you give the user a choice, you need the if statement to figure out what they did in that. So I'll go. Uh, we'll call this 
ask user maybe. Now this is gonna, we can use let again. So let ask the user basically, do you wanna continue? And, that, and so it's gonna be equal to input. And the message would be, uh, do you want to continue? And then I'll do some sort of notation like yes, pipe, no. I want you, I'm expecting you to enter in a, a Y for yes and N for no. But really only if they enter in, enter in an N am I going to uh, switch the switch the flip the switch the other way, right? So if a user ask, and I'm gonna go dot to upper uppercase method. So if user asks dot the uppercase method is equal uh, is equal to n and that now I need parentheses parentheses around this otherwise it's going to complain and a set of braces I will set user continue equal to false and then that that should stop the loop. One thing, if you're a Python user, you know, it's capital T true in that language and capital F false. That's something you'll probably mess up a few times in that. Just be aware uh, that will happen to you. So the thing is, is that enough to test? Absolutely. All right. Let's test this and see if that little chunk of code works in that. Uh, so node run my main oh, main dot while JS. Do you want to continue? Uh, yes. Do you want to continue? Cat. Do you want to continue? Dog. <laughs> right? And only if I type in N do I get out. Okay? So that's my little switch flipper. Right? And that. A lot of work just to, uh, just to do that. Now, probably before I, I want to ask a question, do you want to continue, I am going to let them guess. I guess I, I, did I explain this or not? What is this What is this little program going to do? We're going to let the user guess a number between uh, 1 and 10 in that. So we need to randomly generate a number. <laughs> so we can go const on this because this should not change while the program is running. So const uh, in that number to guess. Now this gets a little ugly. Uh, it's a little cleaner in Python. Uh, we'll go math dot floor. And we're going to do math.random. But math.random in Javaland uh, returns a number to, between 0 and 1, almost to 1, right? Uh, and that. And then we times that by 11, and that'll give us 0 to 10. Little trick oration there. And if, there, if it ever comes back with a little bit of a, you know, uh, like 10 and change, it gets sort of flattened or floored down to the whole number 10. So floor returns a whole number. So if, if we get something like 10.5, 10.8, it's going to be 10 in that. So that should work, but you know, we should really print it out. Uh, we'll take this out uh, when the user really plays the game, but for our own testing purposes, we better be sure that we're actually uh, generating a number <laughs> between one and 10. Otherwise, while we're testing, we're going to drive ourselves crazy. Guaranteed, right? In that. So that's enough. Let's test that. I mean, I got eight. No. Do it again. I got nine. No. I got nine again. No. Uh, seven. Okay, it's jumping around. Seems high. No. <laughs> and that sort of thing. Um, but who knows? So we have a random number. It doesn't seem to be. Uh, Going below zero, it doesn't seem to be jumping past 10 right now in that. So I think it's behaving, but you never know. So we're going to keep this in there uh, until we feel confident. No, no, it's working, and then we'll just we'll take it out. So before we ask the user if they want to continue, we got to say, hey, try to guess a number, right? And so that'll be another uh, let. We'll call it user number. Right, so user number, and we'll do another input. But before we do that, we need to take whatever the user types in, converts it to a number, and then we'll go input inside there. And then we'll say, enter a number between zero and 10. Enter a number 
uh, be between 0 and 10. And that. My colon space, that looks like not a bad thing to do. So we're going to keep asking the enter number. And then we're going to... Uh, we're going to need some way, I, this next thing I'm going to do, I advise against, but for, for demo purposes only, <laughs> right? Um, if user number is equal to number to guess, uh, then they basically won, right? They, they won the game. I, I must have been in Python recently because I keep forgetting to put my parentheses around this, but that's okay. Uh, the IntelliSense is telling me, hey, you could have a problem here. I'm going to go console dot log, and I will uh, tell them that they won. Yeah. Right? You won, and be very, you know, excited about it. Uh, in that, and then I need to break out of the loop. So that's something that you can do. I don't like doing it this way, but the way I've written this. We're just going to roll with it. So the idea is that the user guesses the number. Hey, you won. Uh, program's over. Uh, otherwise, we'll put a hint in. But let's see if this is working, right? So there's two ways to get out of this loop right now, which is a no-no in my world. The user says, I quit, or the user uh, guesses the number, okay? Does this really work, right? So we know it's 8, so I'm not going to put an 8. I'm going to go 6. Do you want to continue? Uh, yes. Enter number 10. So now I'll type in 8. I should get a... Hey, you won. I'm out. The, okay, that that part's working well, and so that will just keep prompting me. Do you want to continue? And do you want to enter a number? I might put one more thing in there just for fun to give them a hint, right? So, so the, but you might say, hey, this demo's about loops. Do tell us more about loops. Well, no. I mean, a loop just all it does is it just do it again, do it again, do it again, and it's the again part that is, in all honesty, the interesting part, right? So if you don't break out of here, then we'll give the user uh sort of a guess uh, well a hint right a hint should you try a higher number or a lower number in that so if user number yeah is greater than number to guess it's too big right then we're going to tell them try a low number console dot log uh, try a lower number. Now we could probably just put an else in here uh, right now uh, in that because uh, else it's else it was a reverse because if, they, if because if it was equal, right line 19, they'd be out of here. So maybe we'll do, we will just shorten this up. Uh, else, console.log try a well higher number it's like price is right higher or lower and that put my semicolons in try to be proper with this in that so now we've added a little bit of a of a, a, a hint in there right and we will give it a shot. Let's try it. So I'm going to go eight. I know it's three. Try a low number. Okay. I'll, uh, do you want to continue? Yes, I do want to continue. Well, then try another number five. Okay. Try a low number. Right. Okay. I'll try one. Uh, yes, I do want to continue. I don't want to quit. I'll try one. And now try a higher number. Okay. Uh, so I'm somewhere between one and five. All right in that i know i can see the answer but the idea is that we're going to take that out eventually and then the user will have to figure it on their own so i'll go uh yes and enter a number i'll go three this time yeah hey, one all right and i guess uh try this enter number between nine and ten i'll go nine and i want to get out right away i want to see did i break this did any of my other code actually break this no i can get out okay and that sort of thing so it's just a little demo of a while loop Right, and so really a while loop is this part, some condition, typically, okay? You typically always need one of these, a little if statement that, sw that switches that condition to false so that you can get out of the loop. There are things where if you, know, if you find what you're looking for in the loop, you can break out of them and that. And what the magic of looping, loops just do it again, do it again, do it again. So the real magic of looping is what's inside, where we're, 
where we're prompting the user to get a number, compared it to the randomly gener generated one above, and that. And if we were going to production, we take out actually printing that. I think we're, after doing enough testing, I feel pretty good, right? And so this is what it would look like for an end user. And I will go, I will go five in the middle each time, try a low number. So I'm going to go three. So yeah, I do want to continue in that. So I'll go three and try a lower number, even lower than that. I'll try one. So I do want to continue. I'll try one. An even lower number? I did zero? Okay. Yes. Yay, I won. That's for stuff. I like that. So this is a, a little thing on the while loop. And I'll put the for loop in another video. So this concludes this video. That's all for now. Bye.